Right, we're looking at trigonometry and non-right angled triangles. Um, we've got three formulae uh, that will be given the sine rule, cosine rule, area of triangle. Um, you don't need to remember them at the moment, but who's to say you won't need to remember we, To be honest, the more you use them, the more you'll learn them, actually. So the first one I'm going to look at, um, I've got to find x here. Now, in order to use the sine rule, I have to have two angles involved, and this one doesn't have two angles involved, so therefore it has to be the cosine rule. And so what I'm going to be doing is uh, putting x squared equals, now it's the 2 either side plus 11 squared minus 2 times 9 times uh, 11 times, and I'm going to squash it, cos of the angle in between. And that is literally what you're putting into your calculator. Now don't forget that it is x squared that you're finding out, so you're going to have to find the square root of it afterwards. So here we go, 9 squared plus 11 squared minus 2 times 9 times 11 times cos of, uh, what is that, 73. All right, it won't be a very nice number. I've square rooted the whole thing as well, and I end up with 12, well, it's 12.00 coincidentally. So I put 12.0 because it will probably be to one decimal place. So there you go. Now then, on the second one, I have two angles involved. All right, I've got this one here, this 42, and I've got to find x. So therefore, the sine rule is going to be easier. So whilst this is this way up, we could write it with the sine a on top. Sine a over a equals sine b over b, okay? Etc, etc. So... That's what I'm going to be using here. I'm going to do sine of x over the opposite side over 15 equals sine of 42 over 12. All right, I need to rearrange that. Now, <coughs> because you're finding an angle, you're going to be using sine to the minus 1 or something. All right, so don't forget that. In fact, I'm going to run out of room. I had to squash everything into fit to fit stuff here. So here we go. Uh, so in my calculator, do it a stage at a time, don't try and do too much at once, alright, it's uh, easy to make mistakes on this, the, the maths isn't too difficult, but um, making mistakes on the calculation and throwing stuff in your calculator is pretty easy to do, so there we go. Right, so 56.8 looks about right, now if we compare that, it's got to be bigger than 42 because it's a longer side here. So if I've got a long side here, this angle here has got to be bigger than this angle here. All right, because 15 is bigger than 12. So there you go. Right, now the area formula is pretty straightforward. Again, like the cosine rule, you want an angle with this, um, the sides that sort of make that angle. All right, so the area is going to be equal to a half times 14 times 11 times sine of the angle, uh, 65, and that's very easy to put in to your calculator. So here we go, half times 14 times 11 times sine of 65, and we get, oops, we put too many, um, put too many uh, uh, brackets in there and the calculator gets confused, um, times uh, 65, just one bracket, thank you very much. And we get, uh, what's that, 69.8. And because it's an area, it's centimetres squared. Right, which looks about sensible again. So it's always worth, um, first of all, uh, check, that are your answers sensible? Uh, you know, area is always uh, a bit of a difficult one because it's a bit difficult to tell. But, I mean, 69.8 is not unreasonable. If it was 6,980,000, then I'd be asking some questions or something like that. The other thing is, if you want to use the um, sine rule, okay, you need to uh, you need to have two angles involved, whether you're finding one and using one, or whether you're using both. So just be a little bit careful there. Cosine rule, otherwise, just needs one angle, whether you're finding it again or whether you're using it.